On May 29, 2023, mass unrest occurred in the northern part of the partially recognized Republic of Kosovo, which resulted in clashes between local residents and peacekeeping troops. Conflicts and clashes regularly break out in this region. In this video, we will look at the background and reasons for these events. In the 6th century, the ancient Slavs began to populate the Balkan Peninsula, and new states began to form, including Serbia. By the 12th century, Kosovo, the territory of the Serbian state, was a significant political and cultural center. The Serbian state later collapsed due to the Ottoman invasion. The Turks began to actively populate the territory, pushing the Slavs to the north. Following the Turks, representatives of the Albanian people settled en masse in Kosovo at the end of the 17th century, many of whom professed Islam. Over time, the Albanians began to consider Kosovo their home and the Slavs as unwanted guests. Orthodox Serbs were persecuted. In the 19th century, Serbia experienced two major uprisings against the Turks. By 1878, the people managed to get rid of the Ottoman invasion and proclaim the independence of Montenegro and Serbia. After the First World War, a Slavic union of six republics was created. Serbia, Slovenia, Croatia, Macedonia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. Later, it began to be called Yugoslavia. For some time, the country lived more or less calmly. After World War II, Yugoslavia embarked on the path of building socialism. Almost all the peoples of Yugoslavia received their republic within the framework of the Federation. But Kosovo became only an autonomous region with a lower level of independence, including because of the wary attitude of the Serbian authorities towards Kosovo Albanians. In Albania itself, conversations began about the need for Kosovo to join it, on the principle of the unity of the people living in the two territories. In the 1960s, the processes intensified. Several influence groups appeared in Yugoslavia and began to fight for Kosovo's secession from the country. In 1989, the situation became more severe. Slobodan Milosevic came to power in Serbia and initiated a referendum that significantly reduced Kosovo's autonomy. For example, Teaching, television, and radio broadcasting in the Albanian language was banned in Kosovo. In September 1991, Kosovars held their own referendum. The turnout was 87%, and about 99% of voters were in favor of independence. Yugoslavia did not recognize the results of the referendum, but Albania did. From disparate groups of supporters of independence, the armed Kosovo Liberation Army began to form. The official authorities of Serbia and Yugoslavia put up with such arbitrariness for some time. But in 1998, the Yugoslav army began to put pressure on the army to liberate. There were armed clashes with the death of civilians. European countries and the United States did not intervene in the conflict at first. But later, Western politicians mostly took the side of the Albanians. At the beginning of 1999, NATO demanded that Yugoslavia fulfill a number of demands regarding Kosovo in particular to allow the deployment of NATO troops on the territory of the region. Yugoslavia refused to comply with the demands. Also, the most common version of the reason for the start of the bombing is the ongoing war in Kosovo at that time, where both sides used ethnic cleansing, as well as the gathering of about 40,000 Yugoslav troops for a possible invasion of Kosovo territory, bypassing ceasefire agreements which could lead to destabilization of the region. However, there are other points of view about the reasons for the start of the bombing. NATO uses the fact of condemnation of the actions of Yugoslav leaders by the UN and various international non-governmental organizations as justification for the use of its forces in Yugoslavia. NATO uses Yugoslavia's refusal of the Rambouillet Agreement as another reason to justify its actions. At the same time, NATO refused to legitimize its invasion through the UN, believing that Russia and China would veto their actions. As a result, NATO began its actions without UN sanction, calling them a humanitarian intervention, effectively ignoring the UN Charter, which prohibits the use of force without a decision of the UN Security Council or not for the purpose of self-defense. However, the UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan, actually supported NATO's actions, declaring the advisability of using force to establish peace. Human Rights Watch estimates that the bombing killed about 1,000 Yugoslav troops as well as up to 528 civilians. The Yugoslav side estimates that up to 5,700 civilians were killed, while the United States estimates that up to 1,500 civilians were killed. Infrastructure, industrial sites, schools, hospitals, cultural heritage sites and military installations were destroyed. A few days after the withdrawal of Yugoslav troops from Kosovo, 
164,000 Serbs and 24,000 Roma fled. Many persons of non-Albanian nationality have been attacked, harassed, kidnapped, and killed. The operation was the second largest at the time, after the 1995 bombing of Bosnia-Herzegovina and the first time NATO used its forces without explicit UN approval, sparking widespread debate about the legality of their actions. The bombing continued until an agreement was reached, which led to the withdrawal of Yugoslav armed forces from Kosovo and the creation of the United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo. As a result of NATO's actions, at the request of Yugoslavia, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia conducted a general investigation into the activities of Allied forces during the period of bombing. The result of NATO intervention was the de facto independence of Kosovo. Without taking into account the opinion of Belgrade, laws were passed in Kosovo, and elections were held. In February 2008, the Kosovo parliament declared independence, and the constitution later came into force. Currently, Kosovo's independence from Serbia is recognized by 101 states out of 193 members of the United Nations, 22 out of 27 member states of the European Union, 27 out of 31 member states of NATO, and 33 out of 57 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation have recognized Kosovo. At the same time, other UN member states, including two permanent members of the UN Security Council, the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation, refused to recognize Kosovo's independence or declared neutrality. At the same time, 14 states withdrew recognition. Despite the fact that the overwhelming majority of the population of Kosovo are Albanians, quite a lot of Serbs live in the north of the Republic, about 100,000 people. From August 1st, 2022, local authorities wanted to introduce a ban on personal documents issued by Belgrade for Serbs living in Kosovo. Also, all personal cars must be converted to Kosovar license plates. This caused natural indignation between the Serbian authorities and the Serbian population. Kosovo troops were deployed to the border with Serbia. But after consultations with U.S. officials, Pristina postponed the introduction of restrictions for a month. The situation was frozen, 